I want to assure you the day you prayed it was delivered, but you need to enter into the spiritual realm. The king has not forgotten you. The Bible says he has engraved my name on the palm of his heart. In life, we will never escape transition. I remember when I was in uh, nursery school, I was told about class one. And I was told in that class, people write with Byros, it is not I or you. And I went to class one. Then I was told in class four, again, people write with pens and not pencils. So when you make a mistake, you cannot rub. And I survived. Then I went to class eight and I was told, now wait, there is what we call form one. A teacher does not write notes, they dictate. And I survived and I went to Form 1. Then I was told when I was in Form 4, there is a place called the university. In this place you are given bulk work for one semester and that is it. And I survived. When I went to the university again I was told there is something called masters. A lecturer comes, introduces the topic and brings an exam on the introduction of the topic. Tell your neighbor I survived. And I came to realize in life Everyone tells you about the next level, but no one trains you how to transition to the next level. And there are times the devil cannot fight the level, but he can fight the person entering the level. Because the moment you don't understand how to behave in transition, you lose it. I want to believe right now I'm seated with a generation that is transitioning. Some of them are leaving campus and they are getting to their job places. Others are in serious relationships and they want to get married. Amen. That is a serious transition. Others don't know what they want to be, but at the end of the day, they can feel something is happening. And we cannot deny change. Change is happening externally and also change is happening internally. But there is one thing that will never change. And that thing that never changes has the power to sustain you in your transition. And that thing is the word of God. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 35, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. The only way to transition successfully in a changing world is to transition in the pattern of that which does not change. I won't lie to you, the world is changing day and night. As an environment student, I can tell you the greatest debate is about global warming. And they are talking about extinction. And everyone knows that the world will come to an end one day. And scientists have their theory. But believe us, we have our statements right. Because we know what was begun in time must come to the close of an age. And we are living in a state of transition. There is transition in Christianity. There is transition in morality. There there is transition in sociology. Things are changing. Whatever was wrong in the days of our fathers, it is now right in our days. Whatever was illegal is now legal in our days. And it is because the world is changing. The patterns are changing. And there is a tendency that people want to change even the way God works. And so we have reached a point whereby we are calling it the new age movement. That they read the scriptures that make sense and those that rebuke and correct, they don't read them. I want to submit to you, if you hate rebuke and correction, two thirds of this scripture will never make sense. Because Timothy says, this word was written to rebuke, correct, and then encourage. And so there is change all over. A story is told about what they call the lifestyle of an ostrich. And an ostrich is one of the biggest birds in the jungle. But it is one of the foolish birds, the most silly birds. And this is how an ostrich survives. Anytime an ostrich senses that there is danger, 
an ostrich buries its head in the ground. Now remember the head of an ostrich is the smallest organ because the eye is bigger than the head. And so it buries its head assuming that the fact that it cannot see the enemy and then nothing is happening around and i want to submit to you some of you are like the ostrich you've buried your head in the ground and you're assuming because you cannot see the change then the change is not happening i want to re to make you realize the change is happening whether you can see it or not whether you bury your head in the in the sun the change is happening and we cannot stop it because change is both eternal and external but we can raise remnants and generals that will not be a product of change because there are two types of change there is negative and positive change and i can submit to you we are living in an age where negativity is more prominent than positivity i work in the media and i can tell you what you call news is nothing but negative news because what they will report is how kdf was killed you will not see the media covering this thing but when there is controversy and when there is negativity that is news because negativity sells they say when a man bites a dog that is news when a dog bites a man that is kawaida look at our conversation how do we talk Buddha your service but don't, what do we mean why our attitude has been shaped with the negative environment that we are living in i understand you as a young man um, i also find myself confessing such things i know what i mean but you can see the attitude of the society and how negative we are even in our thinking we cannot describe a positive thing with a positive statement we have to describe it with a negative word transitions change between one change and another that is transition between one change and the other one that is transition and as an individual you'll never escape change you started in baby class primary secondary university marriage family and at the end of the day change is happening every day i like when we come to church and we are told about the next level but no one tells you how to access the next level no one trains you how to access the next level and many people are dying in the transition stage transition is compulsory in everyone's life in the book of exodus it is a book of transition we see the israelites transitioning from a life of slavery to a life of freedom and the book of exodus is called the book of way out but one thing happens in Genesis 12, 15 and 17, God makes a covenant with Abraham and he promises him that his seed will be held captive, but later he will release them. Are we together? Their captivity was not a surprise to heaven, but God knew that they will be held captive for 400 years. But not only did they stay for 400, but they stayed for 430 because Moses was not ready for the assignment. He took 30 years in the wilderness because he had taken 30 years in the house of Pharaoh. So he needed 30 years with God to take away the 30 years of the world. And so not only had they stayed for long but their captivity was prolonged and when captivity is prolonged we tend to raise a nature of bitterness and I want to submit to you the Israelites were bitter with God how do you call us your children yet we are suffering yet we are under bondage yet we are being afflicted and I was asking myself what kind of God is this that allows his children to go into captivity and allows Pharaoh to rule over them for 400 years and he speaks the captivity then I looked at the book of Exodus and I discovered the captivity was not captivity in the eyes of heaven but it was the training ground because the prophecy said I'm taking them to a land flowing with milk and honey I'm taking them to an estate whose builder they don't 
know but I need to train my people on management and how to raise cities and so they were under captivity because they were gaining skills can I come to your level and I want to shift some people's mentality you are not employed to floss as an employer you are there to get skills that looks like your captivity i can bet most of you don't like what they do you hate it you even hate your boss that is why friday you will go to your facebook and update and say finally it's friday why are you so excited it's friday you hate what you do because you are in a form of captivity open your eyes and realize you are there because there are skills you need there is a land flowing with milk and honey the builders you don't know there is a place called destiny God did not create jobs he created work it is men who are working that are employing but men who are doing jobs cannot employ we need to transition in our thinking because there are men who have understood the principle what is work work is assignment when I discover who I am in God I was created for a reason I was created for a season when I know who I am in God then I locate my assignment let them employ me Egypt is not my dwelling place I'm here to know how to make bricks I'm here to get skills on how to raise structures because I a time is coming when my captivity will come to an end and I receive my place and my allocation that no man can take away from me but the devil wants you to believe that is your place that is where you need to stay the Bible says Joseph said unto them carry my bones because this is not our place there is another place there is another place and I can see a coffin of hope in Egypt I can see a coffin of hope not desperation when they saw the bones of Joseph they knew there is a place called better I came to remind to you there is a place called better refuse to be where you are start embracing transition because change is everywhere and the Bible says before their deliverance God raised a man Anytime God wants to do something, he will not raise an angel. He will not send Michael. He will not send Gabriel. He will raise a man. I came to declare to my generation, help will not come from the north. Help will not come from the south. Help is in you because God is raising you for such a time. God raises men because there is an assignment that only men can fulfill in their dispensation. And the Bible says Moses was there and death was there. But I want to remind you when you are born in the season of promise and when you carry the promise you cannot die. Oh when they were killing babies the Levites were making babies. Hallelujah. When they were killing babies there was a Levite couple that was making babies. The Levite couple did not submit the child to be killed. They knew this is a special seed. The Bible says the same waters that other children were drowned is the same waters where Moses was placed. The same thing that is killing others is the same thing that will prevail. I came to release life. You will not die because it is not your time to die. God is raising you as a man in this generation because the nation needs to be delivered. And you are the man. Yes, you have limitations. You are a stammerer. You have things that don't look like they can qualify you. But I came to remind you, he's not looking for the qualified. He's looking for the available. Are you in the wilderness? If you are in the wilderness, in the absence of God, but in the presence of God, then you are available. Isaiah said, here I am, O oh Lord. Use me. It is availability, not ability. Don't be deceived. People have papers, but we have relationship with the creator of trees. Where papers come from. And the Bible says the deliverer survived. 
We were born in the age of abortions. We were born in the age of malaria. We were born in the age of tuberculosis. We were born in the age of crazy diseases. But we survived. Come on, somebody say, I'm a survivor. We don't take it for granted when I look at an injection that is supposed to be a missiles injection. It tells me there was death in the camp, but I survived. And because I survived, if he didn't get me in my first bath, and if he didn't get me in my second bath, he can never get me. When he had the chance to kill me, he would have killed me. The days I used to drink, the days I used to go in the club, but he lost his chance. Now that I'm in Jesus, he cannot do anything. I have encountered the fire. I have encountered the fire. I am going back to Pharaoh. I have a revelation. Let my generation go. Let them go. Let them go and worship the true God. Yes, their time is up. Their captivity is up. I am here to release my generation. To declare your time is up. You need to embrace the next stage of your change. When you get tired with a place, shift. Because if you don't shift, you'll complain. You'll never see anything good. Transition. And the Bible says... When they were delivered. God is a righteous God. A just God. I told you they went for skills. Amen. And he told them now. Because I'm a just God. Go to their women. And tell them to give you their gold and their silver. I want to assure you. When the Israelites were leaving Egypt. The economy of Egypt was shaken. God does not send you to a place to gain skills only. He is a rewarder. The Bible says whatever they worked for, they were given the wages of their works. Oh, let that Muindi abuse you. Let them call you all the names. But we serve a Russia's God. We serve a Russia's God. After getting my skills, God will give me favor with the same person to give me my wages because I was working for wages. Now they had skills and money, ready to possess destiny. Canaan is not heaven. There are no giants to kill in heaven. Canaan is your place of planting. Everyone has a Canaan here. If you thought Canaan is heaven, no. There are no giants to fight in heaven. Heaven, there is no war. Heaven, the cities are already built. Don't think heaven is a construction site. I know Jesus said he's going to make a place for us. But the place is already made. So don't think that there are no laborers. That is why he's not coming. There is a blood telling him, win more souls. Let the cause of Calvary be fulfilled. Yes, I want to come, but something is holding me. The throne of grace and the blood on the mercy seat. So heaven is ready for us. But we must complete our assignment because sons were created to manifest heaven on earth Amen. the bible says when they were released there are few hurdles that they had to face and the first hurdle was the hurdle of bitterness they were bitter with God in exodus 15 from 22 to 25, we see them approaching the bitter waters. And the waters represented their nature. Because I said, when you don't understand your cause, you become a complainer. And they were complaining about everything and anything. They saw the sea depart and they started saying, well, there are no graves in Egypt that you brought us here to kill us. They started complaining because they were bitter. The Bible says, now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. Mara means bitterness. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when you are bitter, you are bought your transition. 
When you are bitter, you'll never see anything good. All you see is negativity. Why are things not happening? Why are things not happening? But let me show you the solution. This is what the Bible says. And the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? And let us continue. So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the water, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. Praise the name of Jesus. Most of the people are bitter with their past. They are bitter with people that messed them up. Oh, it's time to rise up, forgive, forget, and move forward. You cannot stay there forever complaining. Because once you are out of Egypt, you are out. When the sea opened, the Red Sea, you cannot go back and open it again. It's either you survive in the wilderness or die in the wilderness. There is no turning back. But the devil understands a secret. You can be out physically, but you're still in psychologically. <laughs> You can be out of a mess physically, but you're still in it psychologically. You can be out of a relationship physically, but you're still in that relationship psychologically. Why does it hurt you when they post photos on Facebook? You are still messed up psychologically, but you are out. You declare you are single, but you keep scrolling, looking, looking. What are you looking at? Get out completely. Pray that the Lord will deliver your heart. Let me tell you, we are not dealing with a devil that is fighting us morally. Oh, the devil knows morally you guys are okay. He has ascended to the second level. He's fighting us with principles. He knows you don't drink. You know those are moral standards. Don't smoke. Don't sleep around. Hallelujah. So morally you are okay. Now the second level of battle is principles. And you have to master. If the Bible says our warfare is not carnal but it is spiritual, then why are you engaging a spiritual devil with a carnal mind? It is unfair. The war is more serious when you fight from above. There are more casualties when there are air strikes. That is why when you stay on the ground carnality, the devil will deal with you seriously. And that is why the Bible says we are far above principalities so that when we release it is the air strike we can see their territory we can see their target we release straight to the target when KDF were fought on the ground they shifted levels they started air strikes it is an unfair battle when you fight from a higher level you are guaranteed of victory because you strike with proximity praise the name of Jesus so you better deal with your heart. Why? Because one, your heart forms your perception. What you perceive, how you see things. You see, these people did not see a loving God. They saw a God who has been punishing them and they did not see even the deliverance. The ten plagues didn't make sense to them. Their faith was not established. Perception, how you perceive things. People are sending their CVs. What are you doing sleeping? Why it is in Westlands? Where do you live in Kayole? And you're like, you need job, you're my punk. Perception. Perception shapes your attitude. ATT. Have you ever seen a watchman? Who quarrels you, not for what you have said, but for what he thinks you think about him. Bona kijana unanichukia. Unaona na mimi sijasoma. Sasa ndo unakuja hapa na madharao. Attitude. Have you ever seen people who are just mad? You've not said anything, but because that's how they think about themselves, they force you to believe and you've not even said it. And you're always a victim. Forgive them. Attitude is affected. Bwana asifiwe. Your attitude shapes your actions. Because now if I have a low attitude, because your attitude determines your altitude, how high you go. And so if you have a complaining attitude, every time Moses has to rise and do something, anytime a hurdle comes, you have to complain and you have to speak negative things about yourself. Were well, there are no graves in Egypt, we would have died there. Were well, there are no food in Egypt, why did you bring us here to die? Perception, attitude that shapes your actions. 
Can I show you how it shaped their actions? They exalted a golden calf when Moses delayed. And the actions shape your life. Your life is a product of your actions. If you have a bad life, now go back, consult your actions, consult your attitude, consult your perceptions, then now consult your source of information. If you have revelation, you'll have the God kind of perception. Where there is a casting down, you speak a lifting up. If you have the word of God, your attitude will be like the attitude of God. When they see giants, you see a land you need to possess. It shapes your action. You move where men cannot move and it shapes your life. You become a sign and a wonder. When they wonder how that happens, it is because there is something that shapes your life. Praise the name of Jesus. That is why the psalmist said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ezekiel eleven nineteen, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. God is interested in reconstruction of hearts. Praise the name of Jesus. When your heart is good, your life will be good. Wow, our viewers, thank you very much uh, for listening to the word and always staying tuned to the Gathering of Champion Fellowship. It's a fellowship that happens every Thursday in the city from 5.30 to 8 at Life Church. That is Kenya Cinema. We are always here, young people, assembled to hear the word of God, transitioning from one generation to another. Maybe you could be there. You've heard the message. You've never given your life to Jesus. You are a sinner. You are living in sin. You know for sure that if the trumpet were to sound today you'll not end up in heaven it will be a dreadful day instead of being a grateful day I want to invite you it's a very simple thing you just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and after that you become a child in the kingdom of God and so you can repeat this prayer after me say Lord Jesus today I accept that I'm a sinner come into my heart come into my life take charge of my life and from today I declare that I'm born again if you've made that simple prayer welcome to the family of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, you can give us uh, your number you can share your testimony on the SMS uh, with an SMS on the line that is scrolling on your screen right now and you can join us also for a night of encounter Kesha that happens every third Friday of the month come and let us be blessed together thank you and God bless you see you next Friday 930 same time same Jesus and of course a different message we love you with the love of Jesus